welcome to another Kids at Home conversation from Kids at Heart International. Today we'll be focusing on how God can use the spiritual practice of fasting to transform us and the children we care about. So today's conversation is called Feasting, not fasting, but feasting on God. And I'm Gordon West, and my co host uh, today is Adam Ormord, our Chief Development Officer. Hello, Gordon. Hello, how are you? I'm doing well. Good. Well, we're, we're delighted. Adam and I are delighted to welcome our very special guest, Luce Figueroa, uh, to join us in this conversation. Luce is the founder and director of a, a wonderful ministry magazine, um, it's an international publication. Uh, called Entre Niños, or I think it's Entre Niños, right? I've pronounced this incorrectly for years. Um, I'm privileged to be a, a frequent author in that, and uh, it's 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 a, both a Spanish and English uh, publication for children's leaders and and parents. It's wonderful, and um, that ministry uh, also has uh, training and and ministry efforts globally. She has, Luce has a master's degree in spiritual formation and a master of divinity from Cary Theological College. And she's even working on her doctor of ministry from, from Bethel Seminary. We're amazed we could get her out of her busy schedule. Mm -hmm. So Luce, we welcome you and we hope you're doing well, well this morning from not your home, but a hotel room in Canada. She, you do live in Canada, but you're not at home today. It's right. such an honor to be with you. Uh, Gordon and Adam and Kids Are Heart, um, which it's a ministry that we admire uh, for many years and also it's an inspiration to us and to so many. So thank you for having me. It's really mm -hmm. an honor. Well, thank you for being with us. We've respected your work for many, many years and we're so glad you could be with us. Thanks. Yes, welcome, Luz. So I want to warm us up to this conversation. This is, we're talking about feasting on God and, and really we're, we're talking about fasting and want to just kind of set the stage. So let me ask you, Gordon, if you want to share a time. Oh, oh me, yep, we yep, always ask our guests put, this question. Well, I'm putting you on the spot. So okay, why well. I want you to share a time when you had a deep hunger for something, just something you were not able to satisfy that craving. And maybe this is a memory back from your childhood. I know that's a long way to think back to, but just, oh, thank you, you know, thank back you to that this, out. Just this point where you remember you, you were craving something and there's only one thing that could satisfy that craving. Well, since it is so far back, let me be a little bit more up to date with my answer. Um, <laughs> since I think most people know I live in Arizona, in the desert of Arizona. Um, so you can imagine in the summer here um, that when, when it's really hot, that you know my answer would probably be a cold glass of water. But what a lot of people don't realize is that tap water, to, you know, water right at the sink in Arizona in the middle of summer is anything but cold. Mm -hmm. It is oftentimes just as warm as outside. And so that just does not satisfy. You have to be able to reach for something in the fridge. But, but that's not my answer, Adam. My, my real answer, it's so weird, but this tells you something about my, my life of recent is I just love red bell peppers. And, and when they are at the store and they are way too expensive, I just don't buy them. So I'll buy something like cucumbers instead. And mm -hmm. I'll tell you what, cucumbers do not satisfy a, a hunger and craving for something as fine as a red bell okay. pepper. But this week I have red bell peppers, so that's on my mind. I, well, I splurged and got some, and I will be having one for lunch. So. Good. I'm glad that you're able to feast on some red bell peppers. Feasting on red bell peppers all week this week. <laughs> when, we, when we identify that kind of spe specific physical craving, um, there really isn't any substitute. You know, we just we just want that thing, and 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 we really we really believe at Kids at Heart that it's the same with our soul hunger. That our souls just want something, and that there's really only one remedy. And fasting reminds us, fasting isn't the remedy. Fasting reminds us mm. of what the remedy is. And so, um, Luz, question for you: uh, What what did God do as you grew up and even then, you know, became a, a Christian leader that you are now to help you come to view fasting or feasting on God as a Christian practice for spiritual formation. How did that all happen for you? Yes, well, it is uh, very much part of my 
experience, uh, experiencing God um, for the first time. I grew up in a pastor's home in Chile, South America, in a very busy life. We were six siblings, and my dad worked in full time, full time uh, outside the church, and full time in the church, and a busy home. Wow. And uh, we had um, so many, uh, I would say, evangelistic crusades in the church. And um, I was, I was always involved. I am. I was a very sick child when I grew up, um, so I had so much love from my family. I'm the youngest, so um, everyone was, I was just always uh, surrounded by love uh, from everyone, attention, care. And, but one time I had an accident uh, when we were in a missionary trip in Argentina, going throughout the, all Argentina with the choir from church. I was a child and I had a bad accident and I hit my head really bad and, and uh, about a year after that I had I was very very sick with my ears and I had a very difficult surgery and the night that the, they left me in the hospital for the surgery for the next day I was so scared I, I oh, was I removed from everything that I had uh, from the love and care of family and, and church. And I was so scared, but my mom uh, left me with uh, my first Bible. In those years, there, there were not that many children's Bibles, so I had a full Bible for me. And um, that night in the hospital, when I was removed from everyone, because parents were not allowed to stay in the hospital with the children at the time, um, I, I opened my Bible and I mean, God is speaking in so many ways. And for me at that moment was in John 3, 16, which I knew very well. And I asked Jesus to come into my heart right there by myself in the hospital bed as a child. And the Lord filled me like I was removed from every, everybody and everything, including food. <laughs> mm. And, um, and I was, um, it was such an incredible, incredible transformation in my life and um, I, I would say it, you know it wasn't about healing or it wasn't about the food it wasn't about the people anymore it was just um, experiencing God uh, when I didn't have anything else what a beautiful picture of what we mean by feasting on God mm -hmm. and and yeah it's when we have this uh, this can concept in the church too often today and and i don't think we many people mean to well some people do and some people don't mean to say it but this idea that everything's going to be okay if you if you just follow god everything will be okay and that's not true any of us that have lived for more than about 10 minutes know that's not true but when everything's removed from your life as a very young child god filled you feasted on god by 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 that and and everything becomes okay in that you know god is there with you what thank you for sharing that's a beautiful story and then how has it played out as you you know as you go on to you know grow up and you're a you know studying formation and christian leadership and has this become uh has it evolved some for you yes well um it's spiritual practices um i would say contemplative practices uh, I think grew up from that moment because I, I, I mean, in our church, we, we were a busy life, in my home, busy life, but God took me to that moment of peace and contemplation just with him. And um, that, so that grew up, um, that, that kind of built that desire in me to have those moments with God and experience God. I would say that growing up, um, the spiritual practices that were most common in my culture was uh, prayer, um, scripture, and fasting. And um, mm -hmm. however, I, I grew up in, in my home, we will do in my family, uh, times of fasting as a family. But I, I have to say it wasn't my favorite <laughs> mm -hmm. um, uh, because it seemed that it was more of a negative um, you know, uh, experience in terms of um, the, the removing everything we at that time 
we will have everything removed from us as mm -hmm. children and then growing up as a young person. So it wasn't my failure uh, mm -hmm. growing up. However, when uh, I started reading and studying more about this, I started doing it in a different ways and I started um, loving it in a way that is, it is a practice that is a, it's a, it's a practice that I enjoy more often than, than not. So um, I think I'm so glad that you, uh, Kids at Heart, uh, have the desire to teach parents and children's leaders the right way. Um, that is not something that is forced on the children or something that will remove everything from their life, but really taking something to focus on God and uh, to enjoy life and to enjoy each other. Thank you, Luz. That's, that's so perfect. I, I, thank you for sharing how you felt about it as a child. And I think even a lot of adults feel the same way. So we want to just talk about fasting. When you talk about the spirit of God in these disciplines and these practices, the spirit of God is, is using these and he's using fasting as a means to nurture our love with God, our love relationship with God. And, and that's what we want for our children. Oh, right? amen. So our desire is to create environments at home. That's what this kids at home is all about, which can help children fall deeply in love with Jesus. And, and so, you know, this idea of introducing fasting and not, not so much in that, in that negative kind of almost kind of disciplinary way, but as an invitation um, is, is an invite into this more deep relationship with God. I, we've been reading a book by um, Sky Jatani, and he wrote it about uh, eight or nine years ago. It's called With, a great book. And in the book, he says, life with God is so far beyond our comprehension that it, that it has to be revealed to us. We have to experience it. Just like God did for Luce yeah. in, in that hotel, in the uh, hotel room, in the hospital room. Yeah. Yeah. Brother Lawrence says they can only comprehend it who practice and experience it. And that's our goal with kids at home. That's our goal with introducing fasting into to families, into homes. So when you're going to explain and define fasting now to children, what would you say? What child-friendly language could you possibly use to help introduce this to them in a life-giving way? Yes, well, you know what, before, Luz, before you say, I just want to reflect back on Adam, what you just said, that word invitation is so wonderful. Kids love to be invited to things. And, and so I, I love that. It's not a deprivation, it's an invitation. So anyway, okay. I'm sorry to cut you off, Luz. Go ahead. No problem. And I want to say amen to what Adam was sharing, um, because I think that experience has to start with us adults. Um, I think we, we need to have a new way of experiencing this, um, uh, what is fasting and, and feasting in the Lord and absorbing and experiencing that uh, love from God when we actually uh, separate ourselves or separate um, what we feel we need to separate uh, it's food or activities or uh, anything that wants to pay attention to God and mm -hmm. to others. And I think God will honor that. Mm -hmm. And we need as adults um, to ex experience it in a fresh yes. way. Yes. And uh, one of my favorite uh, writers about um, spiritual disciplines for children is Bernie Shaw, that oh. you know very well. <laughs> yes. And I like how she put it, let's go, let go and take on. I really like that uh, term for children. Let go of something that we love to uh, take on someone that we love. Mm -hmm. And uh, to take on um, maybe a different um, virtue um, that we uh, feel that is hard for us, even for adults. Um, how even about forgiveness is so hard. And uh, okay, how can we experience that in let go of bitterness for a day or for some time and take on um, the gift of forgiveness and the gift of forgiveness from God to us and receive that forgiveness and also give to others. Um, uh, it's not 
talking about food, of course, uh, we, we need to include that for adults and for children, but even in that, in that uh, posture that we need to bring to this experience. That's right. Oh, exactly. And you know, in, in our resource guide that, that will be released with this video, um, we say something kind of similar to Vernie Shore Love in saying, something we love is moved out of the way for a while so that we can pay attention to loving God better. Mm. And um, yeah, it's that it, it it's an opportunity. It's not it's not a removal. It's it's something different, mm -hmm. and we can we can ask God to enter our lives in the place of the thing that we've set aside. But you know, I I think that's really hard to explain to children for adults who don't know why themselves. You know, it's uh, so many. Um, I I think we get this confused with some of the rituals of the church where it's just good for us to go without, you know, and it's like, well, it's, it's not just, it is good for us, but it's not, it's not because of the lack that is good for us. It's because of the presence. And so we, we, we need as adults to experience this. And again, like you said, Lucy, it doesn't have to be food. It might be social media. It might be a number of things. It, it could be, you know, watching TV. It could, it could be, it, as we say, anything that gets in the way of us focusing our attention on God and setting that aside a bit and seeing the miracle of what God does in, in coming in uh, with that is, is incredible. Um, and that's when we're, we're ready to explain it well to a child when we know ourselves. So, you know, um, you had told us that there were some things that uh, from your childhood that there are kind of some misconceptions of this all. What are what are some other ways that we we need to deal with misconceptions or the questions that children might have and 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 their adults might have as we put this spiritual practice into place of feasting with God? Uh, I think one of the areas that um, I like how Kids Are Heart is presenting is this uh, topic of invitation. Um, it, it, I, I, some of the writers that um, I really like, they talk about the spiritual practices as a way of putting ourselves in a place where we can actually um, pay attention to God and to receive from God in being ourselves, um, we, we put our posture of our heart to be able to um, let go and pay attention not only to God, but to ourselves and to others. Yes. Um, because sometimes we're so focused in our own needs and our own um, desires that we forget to actually listen to um, our children as parents. Um, and um, this time when we say, okay, we're going to take time as a family to sit at the table, especially on, in, in meal times, and if we're thinking about fasting, and together sitting down at the table and uh, having that time without phones, without interruptions, and um, just dedicating this time to God, present in our table, and paying attention to our family, and asking our children, uh, where have you seen God today in the school, or where have you seen God in each other, or, or where do you feel that you need God, and having those conversations, I think that is so uh, important to tie it up with fasting because we're feasting in each other and feasting in God and and the and God in ourselves that minister to each other and um, I think the misconception of just you know the discipline of of being in a sad phase because mm -hmm. we're fasting some type of food and we're, we're so hungry but actually enjoying having that time oh today is fast you know, for children, it would be so nice to say, today is a day of fast feasting, and we're going to sit at the table, and we're going to have, you know, a conversation with mom and dad, and we're going to have uh, a conversation with God, and, and having that special time, I think it would be so meaningful, and uh, the families can bring that, not not just bringing it as an enforcement, but it's a joyful time together. So you're saying we don't need to buy sackcloth and ashes in order to be on <laughs> God. Exactly. I think for children, it could become such a wonderful 
memories um, that the family builds on. And, and in my case, I would say as an adult, if um, I can, how I pass, I think what helped me, I heard someone talking about the joy of fasting. And I went, what is the joy of fasting? What is, so I read some more, researched, talked mm. to different people as an adult, and I found out and I experienced it myself, is the joy of fasting after. As an adult, you know, fasting, I do try to fast, food, some food, and, and it's hard. I mean, it's a spiritual practice. We have to remember that. That yes. is, of course, it's not going to be easy. It's going to be hard, but if we're doing it with the joy that knowing that um, we are feasting in the Lord, but also when we end the fasting, oh my goodness, we become so much alert um, to God's presence in our life. And I tell adults and, and women, I speak for women um, uh, retreats, in, you know, in women's retreats. Uh, and I, one time I taught about, uh, we talked about fasting and we did fast what we mean. It's hard for Latino women <laughs> in a retreat where we all want to talk and eat and all that. But we did it. And I ex explained to them, tomorrow, let's celebrate the joy of fasting. And to tell you, there was no, there, there were, wasn't any woman that could say, um, I, I'm not feeling that joy. It was just so beautiful at the end. When you finish your fasting and you bring this fasting to the Lord and you say, God, thank you for this time of fasting. I give it to you. And it's just help us in our hearts and our ears and our eyes become much more alert of uh, the world around us. Now, Luz, I can imagine some people listening to us saying, oh, come on, uh, what, what, is that, what is that joy? But, you know, I think some of the problem is um, when we talk about filling that space with this wonderful time with God, I think a lot of us have an inaccurate or incomplete view of who God is and what that would be like. And, and without an accurate view of that beauty of being with him, then this doesn't sound so inviting. Uh, another, another quote from uh, Sky Jitani that I love is, God would cease to be how we acquire our treasure and he would become our treasure if we had that really accurate view of who he is. He is the treasure. He is the joy in that fasting process. So we have to, we have to, it's, the focus, when one of the inaccuracies is that focus being on the lack of food or the lack of social media or the lack of whatever, when the focus is on the treasure of getting God. So that's, that's great. The, the idea of God becoming our treasure uh, and being, being our, the, the reason for giving up something good is because you're taking on something better. Yes. Right. And um, so obviously scripture, we know there is sackcloth and ashes, right? Throughout scripture, we can find it. In fact, I need to return the Amazon order that I just had delivered yeah. for, this, for this episode. Yeah, but, you didn't need that. Um, but I do want to go back to scripture as our reference point. Uh, where, Luz, uh, would you point people in scripture to show them that the spiritual practice of fasting and the kind of fasting we're talking about has a biblical foundation. Yes, one of my, there are so many uh, in the uh, Old Testament and New Testament, but uh, some from the Old Testament I really enjoy, uh, like even teaching the children is Esther 4. I mean, what a wonderful uh, story of uh, humility and hunger for God, um, yes. for the people of God. Yes. And, uh, I I'll say that God. again, Luz. That, that's it right there. The, a hunger for God, for the people of God. Mm -hmm. Right? Ah. Yes. And, and it becomes um, uh, an opportunity to um, uh, just come to God and say, God, more than liberation, more than uh, and a miracle, we need you. Mm. Because when we have you, um, we'll be able to face life um, yeah. in, in our small needs and big needs for our, ourselves, for our family, for our church. I love that story and to convey that to our children and to our families. 
the other one I, I really like, of course, is Jesus. And I mean, not only his 40 days of fasting, but when he t tells his people, for, of course, in Matthew 6, when he said, when you pray or when you fast, um, I am assuming and, and I believe that it was a way of life for, for families because of what Jesus is saying. I mean, Esther, to be able to actually call people to fast, it was, it was probably something that they did, did uh, regularly. And so when right. it becomes a way uh, of a routine, or a, uh, not a routine in the negative way, way, but it's a ritual for the family and for ourselves in knowing that, you know, we really um, can experience this feasting and fast, um, fasting and feasting in God um, as a way of life. Yeah. Because life is not easy. And parents, uh, when we talk with parents, there's such a need. And I'm so excited to speak with parents. They say, I want Jesus to be the center of my home. Not just the children. I mean, children are a wonderful blessing to us. But as a mom myself, I know we need Jesus to be the center of our home. So when we parents come into that posture of we want Jesus, so we're going to make fasting a way of life in our home. And I love that scripture from Jesus. When mm. you pray, when you fast. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you the know, holy habits. In, in, in preparation for today, for our discussion, I, I did some reflection on that 40 days of fasting. And, and I, don't, I don't hold this as the uh, end all in the passage, but it dawned on me that we always focus, you know, that 40 days in the desert and 40 days of fasting. And then Satan used that to come and test Jesus because he knew he was drained. I wonder if he wasn't drained. I wonder if Jesus knew that that severe testing was coming. And so he went out and prepared for it by 40 days of solitude and 40 days of fasting so that he might be strong and have communed with his father in preparation for one of the greatest trials of his life and that maybe he was strong after 40 days instead of weak after 40 days. So I don't know that uh, we'll probably get letters on that one, Adam, but. <laughs> Let's go an, to an, Gordon. And yeah, that's <laughs> right. Give me a home address. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I like that, Gordon, because as parents and leaders um, and uh, as family, uh, I think if fasting one day a week, um, yeah. something. It becomes how many weeks in the year, you know, when you make that uh, part of your life and, uh, and, and a decision because we're doing as parents and children's leaders is spiritual work. And we sometimes, you know, when we confront um, this, uh, you know, work of the enemy, we, we know it's not from God. We, something happened we're kind of surprised, but when we fast and feast in the Lord regularly, we will be actually more prepared, our hearts, to face difficulties of life. And so it makes sense, Gordon. So that's one of the huge benefits of, of doing this as a family. So what else, would Luce, would you say to leaders uh, in the church and parents to help them see the necessity of, of practicing this spiritual practice with their children? Um, how, how, would this, how would our children benefit from this practice if we, if we help them make this one of their holy habits? Yes, I, I, I believe that spiritual practices in general are um, uh, that we teach our children are ways of teaching from the heart. So it's not so much, yes, we need to explain. And so they understand it logically. And, uh, but the spiritual practices are um, experiences that we prepare the children for life um, in our homes, in our churches. And so fasting, if the children can learn to fast and feast in the Lord when they're young, they'll be able <laughs> to be prepared um, to uh, also feast in, and uh, sorry, fast and feast when they're older. Uh, and I think it's um, an experience that they will be uh, that will help them for the rest of their lives. Mm. Now, um, 
It's very countercultural, of course, like all these spiritual practices. But I think even now, with children being uh, so technologically advanced <laughs> and being the generation that um, is fully, you know, equipped on that, uh, I think at the same time we need to bring that balance. Um, and I think fasting is a great way to help them balance life with that. Yes. Um, on a day that they can actually fast from technology, um, it will equip them to actually, um, you know, experience um, God um, in a different way. Uh, and I think teaching so them how to balance life helps, helps all of us as we practice that be more aware of when life is out of balance mm-hmm. and, and then have the tool to be able to step back into that. Yes, yeah. I agree. So if we want to approach children then with this invitation to engage in spiritual practice of feasting on God, what are some, what are just some practical um, ideas that we could give them? Yes, well, the, uh, once we experience that, I believe as adults, we want to share that with our children. Yeah. And so yeah. practical ways that parents know that, first of all, um, I think pray about what is specific uh, experiences. Uh, the Lord first wants to uh, guide them. And when we know as adults that um, we've been led by God in, in practical ways, because when we ask him, he'll give us the ideas. Yes. But there's so many ideas in terms of um, not only food, but also, as I was saying, technology, especially for older children, and having time away from um technology could be you know videos um video games or activities even young children mm-hmm. um and and enjoy each other company mm-hmm. and enjoy god are uh, going for walks in nature and having activities that um they didn't have time to do together uh, i think that is a, such a great time for families to get so many families that we're so busy even without you know even during this time they are uh, her many parents, but when we take, put something aside, when we put TV or the programs aside with a purpose, um, we got to spend time with God, we'll, we'll, we'll have that time. Other ways also, yeah. I think food is also a, a way, of course, of biblically about fasting, mm-hmm. but with children, we can do that. Uh, we can do, you know, um, replacing, not a meal, but replacing something they really love. And let's say on Sundays, they normally get uh, dessert uh, or ice cream or uh, something um, that they really crave or as a family or pizza for, you know, a week or something like that. We'll say, you know, we're going to have a very simple meal. We're not going to have all all these things. We'll just eat simple uh, in a simple way and dedicate time together at the table. Those are very uh, effective ways also for children to notice and that they're doing something uh, on purpose to pay attention to God. You know, Adam and I have discussed even the idea of needing to um, turn off our headphones with Christian music. Mm. Um, because there are times that silence, you know, the, the music, although it, it's nothing wrong with it, but it, even that can distract me. I can mm-hmm. love that more than the silence with God. Yeah. Kind of thing. yeah. I, I do want to go back to you talking about if, if th- that's a very positive idea of saying, you know, maybe we can give up pizza and have a simpler meal. I just was hoping you were not going to say something like, and then we'd have to eat broccoli instead or something like that. So I'm, I'm glad you didn't suggest that, Gordon. Yeah, well, um, stay tuned to our publication next month because we actually, actually had to film it out of order. And now you'll know who brought up broccoli <laughs> in a disparaging note. Uh, it, he's, he's unnamed in the next video, but uh, he will be named now. Okay, yes, now you know. It's, it's me. But um, yeah. I, there's some ideas here that I... I just, I'm thinking about for myself, it was, uh, it was actually during a season of Lent. You know, this is one of the times in the church calendar where we actually are encouraged to give up something for a season to feast on God. I actually gave up social media. 
uh, I gave up Facebook. And I remember uh, I was in a relationship um, at the time where I would see a spiritual director monthly. And it came to the end of that time of not being on Facebook. And my spiritual director asked me, well, how was that for you? And I said, well, I'm doing great. I'm not, I'm not feeling all the negativity. I'm not feeling, you know, all the, the fear of missing out. I, I just, I'm, I'm not wondering what everybody thinks about the last thing I posted, you know. And my director said, well, maybe that's something you need to feast a little longer or fast yeah. a little more on because it sounds like that's a really good thing. So, um, I think that sometimes what we can do is we can try different things and, and we might not even know that disordered love that we have for these things mm -hmm. at, to right. the full extent. We might think we do, but as we, as we practice these things, we discover the full extent of our disordered love exactly. towards that versus towards God. You know, Adam, I want to I want to share a couple of really wonderful resources um, for those of you that are wondering, you know, and want more things to do as a family and how to model these. A wonderful book that we'd like to recommend is Habits of a Child's Heart by Valerie Hess and Marty Watson Garlett, and um, that will give you some great ideas. But since Luce is here. Um, uh, we want to tell our friends who are Spanish speaking uh, when we we view we know there are not a lot of wonderful resources, not the same kinds of opportunities, but here's one for you. If you wanna know, know more about the big picture of spiritual formation and, and children, how to raise them, how to nurture them, uh, how to teach them, we want you to know about an opportunity through Entre Niños and Bethel Seminary, uh, two organizations that we adore. The Certificate of Children and Family is a six month program online and it's taught completely in Spanish. Um, so it includes a combination of biblical and uh, practical training and spiritual practices for you as a student yourself so that you are, are learning and growing and ready to model these. And so I'd, I would just like to encourage you to go to Entre Ninos's website to learn more about that and, and to see also a copy of Entre Ninos, the online magazine, which we would highly recommend. Uh, and while you're online, uh, would love to have you uh, go to kidsathome.org, kids with a Z at home.org, um, and download the resource guide that goes with this month. But you don't have to go there, do you, Adam? You could go to our new kids app That's right. and, and find it there. You could uh, download the resource guide, uh, share that guide with other ministry leaders. If you don't know how to get our Kids at Heart app, just go to your app store and search for kids with a Z, kids at heart and uh, you will find it there. You can also go to our homepage and there's more information about that and also our podcast. And finally, uh, we have a, um, a couple of Facebook groups we would like to send you to. Adam can't go there because he's still fasting on Facebook, no. <laughs> but, um, Connecting Children with God and Transforming Kids Ministry um, are two Facebook groups where, where more discussions about this are happening. It's with a Z, right? Kids with a Z, always with a Z. Mm -hmm. um, there's a very spiritual reason behind that. When Kids at Heart started, there was no URL available with the S. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> so it became a branding thing. And now the secret's out of the bag. Luce, it's been a delight. And uh, we, would, we would just so cherish it if you would close us in a time of prayer. Would you do that for us? Oh, absolutely. Thank you. Yes. And, and Luce, would you pray for us in your mother tongue? Oh, okay. Yes, Thank for you. sure. Thank you. Padre Celestial, en el nombre de Jesús, le damos gracias por este momento de poder conversar sobre eh, nuestras vidas y la vida de nuestras familias y la necesidad y la oportunidad que nos da de aprender a ayunar y festejar en, en su nombre. Señor, le pedimos que bendiga a Kids at Heart y bendiga, Señor, todos los esfuerzos que ellos están haciendo y también bendiga cada hogar representado. Señor, gracias. Le amamos, Señor. Amamos su nombre. Amamos su reino. Y le damos gracias en el nombre del Padre, del Hijo y del Espíritu Santo. Amén. Gloria a Dios. Amén. Well, we just want to invite everyone who's watching or listening right now to take the next few minutes just for some quiet time. We're going to actually keep the video and, and the podcast going. We'll have some music in the background. Just this time for you to just be quiet with God and listen 
and, and ask God, how, how would God have you use what you're learning about spiritual formation, about children, and, and even about this idea of feasting on God, enter into a time of quiet at this point.